Katie here from Notes in the Sewing Room. Thanks for joining me today. Today's video is all about my sewing plans for the rest of August and September. If you are new to my channel, I really enjoy talking about everything to do with sewing. So that's sewing patterns, fabric, and things that I've been making, buying fabric, um, fabric inspiration, sewing inspiration, all that kind of thing. I, I'm also interested in upcycling, so sometimes I make some upcycled projects as well. So if that's something that does interest you, then please do consider subscribing to my channel, that would be amazing. And thank you to everyone who has subscribed already. It is amazing. When I started my channel, I never thought that, um, you know, anyone really enjoy watching my videos. So um, thank you to everyone who does join me every week. It's, it's really nice of you. So as I said I've got a few different things to talk to you about today in terms of my plans for the next few weeks and some of the things are for myself and I've also got some um, things that I'm planning on making for my little boy as well. So if you are interested in children's patterns then they'll be coming up very soon. So let's get started and um, see what I've got to tell you about. By the way, for anyone who is interested today, I'm wearing one of my trusty Agnes tops by Tilly and the Buttons, and I'm also wearing a home-drafted, self-drafted DIY skirt. If I just stand up, you'll be able to see it. I did record a quick video about how to make one of these DIY skirts a couple of weeks ago, so you can find that on my channel if you haven't seen it already and you are interested in making one. It's super easy, you don't need a pattern, and I'm really pleased with it. I'm wearing it lots, so I definitely recommend it. I'll just stand up so you can see. It's got this lovely um, elastic waistband, if I just come a little bit closer, it's silver, I really like the sparkliness of it. And I've used this really nice viscose fabric, which is just gathered into the waistband. And I got my viscose from a So Haley Jane box, and it's literally taken one meter of fabric, which I think is amazing. Any, any sewing project that uses a meter of fabric is, is good with me. So yeah. I recommend giving it a try if you haven't seen my video or you just fancy doing something different. So anyway, let's get to it and I'll tell you about what I'm planning on making over the next few weeks. So the first thing that I'm planning on making is actually a pattern which I got free in Love Sewing magazine. It's actually a thread count pattern and it's called 4-in-1 Summer Basics. Now I know we're coming towards the end of summer, but I kind of think, do you know what? This skirt can be made for any time of the year and I can wear it with tights you know, later on in the year, whatnot. Um, and also I could wear it for the rest of August, September, whenever I actually get around to making it. So it's a, it's a, the kind of skirt that I've been planning on making for ages or thinking about making. So I'm hopefully gonna make this little skirt here, the shorter version. So I don't know if you can see on there, but it's got a kind of paper bag waist. I think that's what you call it with a little tie at the front. So I just think it looks really nice. Looking at the pattern pieces, it does look like it's a little bit short. So I think I am gonna add some length onto it. Um, being quite a tall lady, I'm five foot 10, I do often have to add a little bit of length onto patterns. So I'm probably gonna make this so it comes, I don't know, somewhere just above my knee, something like that. But I'll have another look at the pattern pieces. And and then of course I'll report back when I've made it and let you know how I got on. But this is available in sizes small through to extra large. And I'll, I'm not sure what size I'm gonna go for. The small is um, UK sizes eight to 10 and the medium is 12 to 14 and the extra large is 20 through to 22. But it's quite a nice pattern because there's, there's a few different things that you can make in there. Um, trousers, the top, etc. So if I get on okay with the skirt, then maybe I might consider something else. But I'm going to try the skirt first anyway. And the, the fabric that I'm going to use, I've actually had this fabric in my stash since last year. But I, I kind of fell out of love with it a little bit. I ordered it online, thought that, oh yeah, that'll be really nice. But when it arrived, it wasn't exactly what I was hoping for. So I thought, do you know what? I don't want to have to buy more fabric. So I'm going to use it, but I'm actually, I've decided I'm going to dye it. So I've bought some Dylon navy blue all-in-one fabric dye, which is just going to go into the washing machine. So fingers crossed it actually works okay. But this is a chambray type fabric and um, it's quite lightweight. So I'm hoping that it dyes okay. Um, I need to have another look at the instructions of the dye, but um, I think that you have to, your fabric has to be damp first. So I'm probably going to have to maybe wash it kind of so it's on, 
so it is quite damp i'm not really sure how i can get the whole fabric to be damp if i don't put it in the machine and then obviously the dye goes in afterwards so but i just thought it saves me wasting this fabric and it also saves me having to buy some more fabric when this is actually the type of fabric that i wanted to make that little skirt project in so i should have plenty i think i've got about three meters worth here so i'm sure the rest of it will come in for something else but it's, it's quite lightweight um and um like i said i think it would be good for, for now but hopefully later in the year as well so that's the first thing that i wanted to share with you now the next thing i wanted to share with you is actually um some fabric that was gifted to me by minerva as one of their brand ambassadors and i'm planning on making this into something for william my little boy so william is now 11 months old and i've decided that i really enjoy making children's clothes i've not really discovered it too much when he was much younger when he was kind of newborn etc I made a couple of things and didn't really get into it because he was just growing so much and of course he is still growing but um perhaps not as quickly as what he was when when he was newborn I don't know he is growing I don't know but I'm gonna make things that have got wiggle room so we've got kind of room to grow in there but I'm gonna use this lovely fabric with rockets on so this is a cotton jersey fabric it's quite a lightweight cotton jersey fabric white on the back and then um yeah it's got a bit of a stretch to it i think when you stretch it it does go a little bit white um but that's okay because of course it's for children's clothes and um i'm sure william's gonna really like it i think he's gonna look super cute in this um so i'm going to actually use a pattern that i've used before for william and it's super cute and it's really easy for him so it's actually um perfect for, for jersey fabrics it's called the avery romper it's available in um, children's sizes um zero through to 24 months and um, it's rated as being for intermediate sewers but i think that the most complicated parts of this is actually the top stitching if i show you the line drawing there the top stitching is basically all around the the top section so around um the side sections and then up around the straps and then you've got the option of adding on a cuff around the ankle or not i put a cuff on the ankle last time so i think i'm going to do that again um so the sizing goes zero to three three to six, six to 12, 12 to 18 months, and then 18 months to 24 months. So I previously made the size six to 12 months. And even though William's 11 months now, the romper is still okay on him. It's slightly short in the leg. Um, so I think all I'm gonna do, rather than tracing out the 12 to 18 months at this stage, I'm literally gonna add about an inch and a half onto the leg because the actual top section is fine for him. And it's really a lovely make to wear with a little t-shirt under or a little baby vest um, with a long sleeve, anything like that. So, um, but the version that I made for him before has been well used and um, there's no poppers in this around um, the bottom area or anything like that so there's no fiddly fastenings at all so it's literally a, a pull on from the ankle and up over the shoulder so it's actually really easy for nappy changes and um it, he really likes sort of being able to move around in it quite freely i think so um but yeah this is by a company called pattern paper scissors and um, they've got quite a lot of different patterns on their website which are really nice but this is actually the only one of theirs i've got at the moment but i'll definitely consider getting some other ones because um this, this one's really nice so so, um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to using this. So I got the previous romper suit out of a metre of fabric. So I've only got a metre here, so I'm sure this one will be absolutely fine. Um, it's quite white, so I might even have some left over. Um, if I have, then I might make some more little cloths for him or something like that. Um, or maybe a bib or I don't know. I quite like to make some more baby hats, actually. I think I've got a brindle and twig pattern somewhere that's um, you know, a really cute little baby hat with little ears. So yeah. I don't know but i've got i've got this anyway and i'm planning on making a romper so hopefully i'm going to get around to that over the next couple of weeks i want to get that one done um so the next thing i wanted to talk to you about is actually another children's pattern and this pattern has been given to me by a company called ministry of patterns so they're actually a company that are new to me personally i've not heard of them before uh, but they reached out to me and said, would I be interested in making one of their patterns? And um, they were um, really nice and allowed me to choose a pattern from um, their website. So you can find them on Instagram and they're also on SD. Um, I think they've got a website as well. Um, so anyway, I'm sure if you Google Ministry of Patterns, you'll, you'll find them. Or like I said, you can find all their links via their Instagram page as well, which is really good. So they've got patterns on there for... Um, 
for you know um, everyone really um, but one of the things that I thought would be really nice to make was a children's jumper and that is it's a dinosaur design so I'm going to put some footage in of what the dinosaur jumper looks like so I've got the pattern printed out but I've not actually got the printed instructions they're on my iPad so I thought it would be easier just to kind of put in a little screenshot of what the um the dinosaur jumper looks like but the thing I liked about this jumper is that it's different to any jumpers that William's got already um it's going to be I think fairly straightforward to make um, it's got scales down the arms as well, um, like a dinosaur. So I think that's going to be really nice. I think from a sensory kind of point of view, so obviously it's going to be able to touch it and kind of look at it and that kind of thing. So I'm going to use two different cotton jersey fabrics to make this project. So the first one I've got is this one here. So it's a kind of burgundy um, fabric. Um, if I have got any of this left, I may well make a hat out of this because it's a really lovely quality um, cotton jersey fabric. I bought this from Fabricate Murfield and um, yeah it's, it's really lovely I would describe it as a medium weight cotton jersey so I'm looking forward to using that for the main body of the jumper and then I thought for the scales what have I got already in my stash that might work so I made a t-shirt for my husband a while ago in a mustard cotton jersey and I've got some scraps left over so I thought that this would work really nicely for the scale sections of the jumper so um yeah I think those two are going to look quite nice together and um if I get on well with the project which hopefully I will then I might make some of the variations in different colours as well at some point um but the um the I'm just going to check my notes so I can tell you what what size it's available in it's available in sizes 76 through to 158 and I'm planning on making either the size 80 or I think the size 86 for William. Um, I've not cut it out yet, so I'm not 100% sure. But again, I shall report back on all the sizing and whatnot when I've actually made the jumper and I can tell you like how I got on with it and stuff. But um, you can get it as an A4 pattern or an AO pattern, depending on how you like to print off your PDFs. I tend to send mine away to be printed because I, well, one, I don't have a printer at home, and um, two, I really don't enjoy sticking all the, the pages together. So either way, for me, there's kind of a cost involved when I get uh, PDF patterns. Um, but um, yeah, I, I, I normally send them away. I, I normally make sure I've got a few um, to uh, send away and then have them printed. And re most recently, I've had my printing done at Fabricate Murfield, and I found that the service has been brilliant, and um, they come on really nice paper and stuff, which is really nice to fold up and then I can put them in my drawer really easily. That is the Dino jumper and I'm looking forward to working on that one um, again over the next few weeks when I get round to it. Hopefully it's going to be a fairly speedy project to make. Um, it's only a sweatshirt, it's, the only difference is it's got um, scales um, but yeah looking forward to that one. If you have tried any of the Ministry of Patterns I'd love to know how you got on with them and if you have tried the, the Dino jumper or anything similar I'd love to know any tips that you've got anything like that and that goes for anything that I'm showing you in this video. If you've made any of the projects before um, I'd love to know how you got on with it and of course if you are working on anything else at the minute then do let me know in the comment section below uh, because I always like to chat to you in there anyway so that's that so the next thing I wanted to mention is I am going to be going to Goodwood Vintage Revival Festival um, in September so I've been thinking oh what kind of dress can I make to go in so I have bought myself and I'm going to put some footage in here so that you can see um, the Jennifer Lauren rainy dress I think you say it rainy I'm not sure I might be saying that wrong uh, but it's a kind of vintage inspired type dress now the reason I'm not going to go for a straightforward vintage pattern is because even though I've got some in my stash I just fancied making something that's kind of vintage inspired rather than straightforward vintage and I think I'll probably get more wear out of the dress afterwards I've also found some fabric on Minerva, which I think is going to be really nice. So again, I'll put in some footage, but it's basically a black and white kind of check type fabric, um, which I think has got quite a vintage vibe to it. So um, the rainy dress can be made with either a gathered skirt or you can make it with a pleated skirt, depending on what you fancy. It's got a kind of curved waistband and I think it's got two different necklines as well that you can choose from. It's also got a side zip. So I think it should be suitable for kind of intermediate to advanced sewing. Was. although I always kind of think if you fancy doing things take your time read the instructions don't rush it and hopefully you'll be fine I am not experienced at doing side zips so I'm hoping that I get on okay at doing that in the past I've kind of put off doing anything with a side zipper even though I've done loads of zips like in the back of garments I don't know what it is about 
putting his up in the side. I normally get a little bit like, oh, I don't know if it's going to be okay, if it's going to look all right. So if you have got any tips for putting zips in the side of a garment, then do let me know. I, I'd, I'd like to hear any, any tips that you've got. But I'm going to give that one a go because I think it looks really nice. And if I do get on okay with the dress that I'm going to make for Goodwood, I've also got a wedding that I'm going to in September. So I thought perhaps I could use the same pattern to uh, make a different dress to go to the wedding as well. But I'll see how I get on with the good one first and then, you know, take it from there. Um, the pattern is available in sizes six through to 24. So I am not sure which size I'm going to make yet. I'll maybe either go for uh, possibly the size eight at the top and then down to a 10 at the hip, I'm not sure. Um, again, I'll report back when I've made it and let you know how I found the sizing. Now, one good thing about the rainy dress is, and a lot of the Jennifer Lauren patterns actually, is it's available in different cup sizes. So I think this one is available in cup sizes A through to D. So it's nice to have that choice. Um, I'm personally, I, I don't have um, a big um, bust area. So having the um, difference in cup sizes tends to work quite well for me. So yeah, I'm looking forward to having a go at making that dress. And I think this will be possibly the oh, third Jennifer Lauren pattern that I've tried. I've tried a couple of them before. So I do tend to quite like them. They tend to fit me okay. Um, so yeah, another one I'm looking forward to. Now, next on my list to make over the next couple of weeks is uh, actually not uh, an item of clothing. It's um, a book bag. Now, I don't know about you, but I find book bags so useful. So um, I know there's various different names for book bags. I, I'm talking about basically a straightforward rectangle bag um, that's got a lining or not got a lining and then just some basic straps on there. So nothing fancy. Um, and th there's lots of templates and things you can get online. Or of course, you can just draw out your own rectangle. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, I've made quite a lot of book bags before. And I just find that they're useful for everything, really. Taking your lunch to work. They're useful for going to the shops. Um, anything. They screw up and they go under the pram okay. And um, yeah, just super helpful. So I am going to use two different fabrics that I've got here. So these are both from Sew Over It. And I'll, I'll be honest, these fabrics were both given to me by Sew Over It for another the project that I've been working on for them. So if you keep an eye on the Sew Over It um, Instagram TV channel, then you'll see uh, what I've been working on soon. Um, I don't want to say too much about that at the moment, but it's really exciting anyway. Um, so, but I've got these bits of fabric left over from that project. I don't want them to go to waste because they're both really, really nice. So this is actually a Lisa Comfort Home fabric and um, it's quite a... I would say it's medium to heavy weight fabric. It's really nice. It's in this gorgeous magenta colour. Um, I think that's what it's described as on the website. And it's got these beautiful leaves on there. So I was sent half a metre of that fabric and I've, I've got some of it left. So I thought that it would make a really nice bag that I could use, well, whenever really. But I thought it was quite nice. Got a bit of an autumnal vibe to it. So that's going to be for the outside of the bag. And then I've got this cotton fabric, uh, which is in this lovely gingham that I'm hoping to use for the inside of the bag. So um, yeah, I mean, when I've made book bags before, I do tend to line them, um, just makes it, I don't know, a little bit pretty on the inside then as well. I'm probably gonna go for some straightforward gray straps, perhaps. I think I've got some gray um, kind of, I don't know what you call it, kind of cotton drill, I don't know strap type fabric I've used before, can't think of what you call it, um, but I think that will look quite nice. I think that they work so well together, so, um, but yeah, a book bag they're going to be, I think, so that's going to be nice. And then the, I've got two more projects that I wanted to talk to you about. So I've actually cut one of them out already, um, but I can show you the fabric that I'm using. So I bought this fabric last year, I think from Sew Wardrobe. Um, so this is a kind of viscose fabric. It's got a beautiful drape to it. So if you can see, and it's got little birds all over it, which I think is super cute. So this is actually a really lightweight fabric and I feel like I should have used it earlier on in the summer, but I basically just haven't got round to it. So um, this is going to become a Forget Me Not Patterns Ella skirt. So I've cut out the midi version. Basically, it's available in three different sizes um, or three different lengths, should I say. So you've got the mini length, the midi length and a longer length. But I found, looking at the pattern pieces, that I thought the mini, which I was going to make, looked a little bit on the short side for me. So I've decided to go for the midi length. So I'm hoping that that works out okay. Again, I'll report back when I've made it and I've finished it and all of that. Um, 
but I'm, I'm using this. So the uh, the Alaska, if you're unfamiliar with it, is um, quite a, a basic design, I suppose. It's got a straightforward waistband, um, then it's got a slight gather to the main part of the skirt, and then it's got a tiered section, which is also gathered. So it's got a kind of ruffle detail around the bottom. So um, I've never made a skirt with a ruffle detail before or a gathered panel on the bottom. So I'm looking forward to giving that a try. I'm not sure if it's gonna suit me or not. I love those type of skirts on other people. And there's some beautiful dresses around at the moment, which have also got that kind of design. Um, but I thought I'd give it a go and see if it works out for me. Uh, so the Ella skirt is available in a few different sizes. It's available in sizes 28 through to 48. Now I'm going to make the size or actually grade between two sizes. So I've cut out the 34 at the waist and then I've graded out to the 36 at the hip. So in terms of the body measurements, the 34 at the hip is 27.5 inches and then the hip measurement is 40.5. So my measurements are 32 bust, 28 waist and a 40-ish hip. So I think that this is a little bit of ease in it. So I think grading between the two sizes is going to work quite well for me um, because um, the finished garment measurements are slightly bigger than the body measurements as often is the case. So yeah, really looking forward to finishing that skirt. I'm about halfway through it at the moment. It's finished with an invisible zip at the back. It's made for woven fabrics and yeah, it's just a really nice little pattern and I've had it in my kind of pattern stash for quite a few months. I bought it um, way back kind of probably the start of the summer. I've only just got around to cutting it out and whatnot. But yeah, I'm looking forward to finishing that one and hopefully I get a little bit of wear out of it before the weather turns absolutely um, terrible um, or maybe just much colder, who knows. Um, but I have got a bit of the fabric left over. So I thought, why not make a top to match? And of course I could wear the top separately if, if I wanted to. So I thought I'd do another variation if I've got enough fabric of the Sagebush Top by Friday Pattern Company. So I've made two different versions of the Sagebush Top already. I've made uh, one hack of it in a jersey fabric, which you can see on my July Makes video if you haven't seen that. And I made it sleeveless in a jersey. It's actually made for a woven fabric. Um, the, the pattern is ideally, but it tended to work quite well actually in, in the jersey that I used. I just took in the side seams by quite a lot and changed um, the details that I did around the neck. But if you watch my previous video, then you can hear more about that. But I was thinking that um, I've got kind of limited fabric here, so I may miss off the ruffle this time, um, do the sleeves, and then possibly rather than doing the bias binding finish around the neck, I may just um, overlock the neckline, turn it over twice, and then make a little um, opening to put on a little button at the back. So just make a little um, buttonhole type, what do you call it? You know, you, you turn some fabric through with a rouleau loop, or you know what I mean, make a little uh, loop. For the, for the button to sit on the back of the, the neck. Sorry, I've not had a lot of sleep over the last week. William is teething and um, yeah, <laughs> I've had limited sleep. So I can't remember what it's called, so apologies. But um, yeah, so I think this is gonna make a lovely sagebrush top anyway, if I've got enough fabric for that. So again, I shall report back and let you know how I get on. But I'm really looking forward to working on all these different projects. So if you have made any of them before, um, I'd love to know and if you've got any questions about anything that I've mentioned also then do leave me a comment below I, I really do love chatting to you below and that's all I've got to chat to you about today so if you have enjoyed watching please do press the like button that helps YouTube and um, tell people that obviously you like the video and it encourages other people who do like sewing um, to also find my video and then watch my channel so I really would appreciate that Thank you to everyone who has, um, you know, continually uh, joined me week on week and you've subscribed already. I really, really do appreciate that. And um, if you haven't subscribed already, then please do consider a subscribing. That would be uh, amazing. I'd really appreciate it. So but until next time, I'll leave it there. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you soon.